Welcome back to the Bloomberg Google Hangout at the U.S. Africa Business Forum. I'm Jonathan Allen. I'm joined now by Maurice Templesman, uh, the head of Lazar Capital International, uh, and someone with a great deal of experience in, uh, in resources in Africa, diamonds in particular. I wanted to get your uh, thoughts on uh, how Africa has changed over the years and where you see it headed, particularly uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to gems and other, uh, other resources. Well, I, I think if you step back into history for a short time, the, the uh, period of independence is, uh, what, roughly 50 years? And I think you've had uh, many changes. You've had economic changes. You've had political changes. And uh, I think above all, you're also beginning to see generational changes. There's a younger generation, a newer generation that is coming into position of governance. And um, there's been certainly an expansion of middle class, uh, but um, I think there are great opportunities that will be coming up and what in essence is an expanding potential market and a good place for investment. And as someone who's invested successfully in a continent that's had great volatility over that period of time, what's been the key to that success? Uh, what's made your investments uh, better than others, safer than others. Uh, what's your assessment of, of risk and reward there? Well, I think that's an excellent question because uh, like everything else, investment is uh, a balance between risk and reward and you make a judgment call. Uh, but the word investment sometimes is, is simplistic because you think in terms of, of uh, capital. Uh, investment in Africa, in addition to material capital, requires, um, in, in, in achieving the right balance between risk and reward, is human investment. I would recommend to all those who uh, seek long-term investment in Africa to make sure that their team on the ground is uh, energetic, young, open-minded, and uh, politically sensitive or sensitive to the cultures in which they have to live. But the human factor is particularly uh, weighty uh, in that part of the world. And for very, basically a very simple reason, and that is the institutions are so young and not well set, so the human contact the human relationship, the capacity to anticipate a problem before it arises mm -hmm. is critical in terms of the balance between risk and reward. And uh, what are you looking for from this conference? What's, uh, what do you want to hear more about? What are you excited about in terms of uh, opportunities in Africa? Are there particular regions, particular industries that you're looking at? You know, I, I think the important thing uh, <coughs> Uh, about this conference is the fact that it is taking place because it is a recognition that there is a maturation, maturity in that particular market, in the particular relationship. And like every geographic market, and one has to be very careful not to call Africa one particular thing because there's a great deal of variety there, as you know so well. Um, so you, you have to basically um, make sure that there is this human relationship, this human contact, and the fact that it's taking place is a recognition that uh, the commercial side of it and the economic side have now reached a level where, since we, we're based on the private sector, each one of the investments, each one of the deals has to be individual ones, and each company pursues its own, hopefully enlightened self-interest, but self-interest. All this does is simply emphasize that this is a, a normal, uh, mature, growing market where those who are somewhat adventurous can seek benefits. Historically, uh, U.S. investment in Africa has been uh been very small. It makes up a very small proportion of the, the foreign direct investment from the United States. What's the competition factor there right now as a, as a man of the world? Who is the United States competing against in terms of uh, trying to have influence uh, both in sub-Saharan Africa and, and in North Africa? 
Well, I, I, I think that the Made in USA label, if you talk about manufacturing, uh, manufactured product, is still a valuable thing. I think you compete, obviously, with historic relationships, the old metropoles, the old, old colonial powers, mm -hmm. who now have commercial relationships, whether it's UK in the English-speaking areas or the French in the Francophone areas or the Portuguese in Angola and Mozambique. There's a historical bound that that's competition. You certainly compete with the new arrivals on the scene, the new powers like China and India. Uh, a renewal of Japanese uh, uh, effort because it was very, very active and then it sort of petered out. But I would say right now uh, our competition in terms of uh, raw material sourcing uh, and is principally in pr is, is principally the China and India, and um, we have a particular niche, a particular as, as a country. I mean, the, and I think there's room. I also don't think it's a zero sum game. I think uh, competition is good, and each each country can contribute the things that it does well at this point. There's been a lot of talk about moving away from resources, uh, trying to move toward uh, financial services, telecommunications, all sorts of other things. How realistic is there is it to think that there will really be a move away from that? Uh, it seems like there are so many resources, uh, whether you're talking about uh, mining or drilling. Or, uh, no, I, 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 th I think there will be simply because you have uh, an increasing middle class, you have increased access or participation in the rest of the world and take for instance your your communications uh, the uh, <clears throat> the um, uh, there's a whole chapter of telephony that was kept in Africa I mean the cell phone and the way they're dealing with it is certainly and certainly opened up the continent for, for communication. The airplane and the, the cell phone have done more to open up the African continent for Africans as well as outside investors, and, and that's still there. Have you made any decisions uh, with regard to this summit in terms of uh, increasing investment in, in Africa that you care to share? Uh, um, not particularly, since I mean ours is sort of an ongoing pattern. But we're glad to see the summit because I think in a sense, as I said, it's a reaffirmation that this is both a, uh, a market, a geographical area and relationships that we should, we as country and we as companies, should try to pursue to the best of our abilities. And, uh, and I come back again. The important thing is, uh, the only thing I can come back and emphasize, the human capital uh, component of the investment uh, um, package is extremely important uh, if you hope to achieve a success at this point. Maurice Templesman, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us here at the Bloomberg uh, Google Hangout. We'll be back shortly uh, with, uh, with another guest. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and uh, best of Bloomberg. Thank <laughs> you. Take care, yeah. sir. Thank you. Good.